Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's video. This morning, we are in Mark chapter 13, doing the whole chapter, picking up where we left off last Sunday, uh, which says this. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. And if you know anything about the first century Jewish temple, it was amazing. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? And Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. You must be on your guard. <clears throat> Excuse me. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me. Look at this. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation, that's a quote from the Old Testament book of Daniel. When you see that standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. <clears throat> let no one on the housetop go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning when God created the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, <clears throat> or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That's a quote from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Verse 26, at that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Verse 32. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Look at this. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. All right, now what on earth does all of that mean, you might wonder? And I'll just tell you straight up, I'm not even going to pretend to know every detail of how or when that's all going to happen and play out. But there are two things I do know from this passage. Number one, everything Jesus said either has already happened, like the destruction of the temple, or it will happen someday in the future. And number two, 
My job and your job in all of that is simply to do what he just said there, right? To keep watch, to focus on pursuing that authentic faith we talked about last Sunday, to, to focus daily on following him and be ready for him to return whenever that may be. You know, if Jesus came back today, what would you want him to find you doing? That's how we need to live. See, my job is not to focus on conspiracy theories about the end times and get all whipped up on, on weird stuff or try to calculate a date. Dude, Jesus just said that Jesus himself doesn't even know the exact date, okay? No, according to Jesus, my job is to trust him and stand firm as a follower of Christ to the end, no matter how bad persecution gets. And it's my job to be on my guard against anything or anyone that would tempt me to, to wander away from the real Jesus in any way. Whether that means watering down my faith or compromising with the world somehow, none of that. Because however crazy things get, here's the key, Jesus is our hope. And if we stay close to him through it all, no matter how rough it gets, man, we'll be better than okay on the other side. Because no matter how bad it gets along the way, remember, in the end, God wins.